In the shadowy depths of Eastern Europe, nestled between thick, ancient forests and shrouded in eerie folklore, lay the small village of Yevanovic. The village's history was steeped in blood and whispers, where tales of vampires thrived alongside the reality of hard, rural life. Among the villagers, two names were spoken only in hushed tones, as though saying them aloud would invoke their dreadful presence, Blagojevici and Arnold Pale. Blagojevici was a man who had died in 1862. He was a respected elder, his death mourned deeply by his son, Ivan. But the grief soon turned to terror. Just a few nights after Blagojevici was laid to rest, Ivan woke to a soft, insistent tapping at his window. When he drew back the curtains, his heart nearly stopped. There, standing in the moonlight, was his father, pale, gaunt, and with eyes that glowed with a sinister light. Let me in, my son. Blagojevich whispered, his voice as cold as the grave. I am hungry. Ivan, trembling with a mixture of sorrow and fear, refused. He slammed the shutters closed and barred the door. The next morning, Ivan was found dead in his bed, his body drained of blood, his face twisted in a mask of terror. The village was thrown into panic, whispers of Blagojevich's and dead return spreading like wildfire. The once respected elder was now a figure of horror blamed for the mysterious deaths that followed. As the villagers grappled with the terror wrought by Blagojevici, another specter from the past re-emerged. Arnold Pale, a former soldier turned farmer, had died a few years prior under similarly mysterious circumstances. Pal's death during haymaking had been abrupt and violent, his body found lifeless among the fields, blood staining the earth beneath him. In the weeks following his death, the villagers began to die one by one, their bodies discovered with the same telltale signs, bloodless and horror-stricken. It was said that Pale had once been attacked by a vampire, and now, in death, he had joined their ranks, hunting the neighbors he once protected. His victims were found with puncture marks on their necks, their blood drained, and their expressions frozen in primal fear. The villagers lived in constant dread, locking their doors at night and praying for the dawn to bring safety. Blagojevici and Pale, Vile and nasty creatures of the night waged a silent war on the village. Their hunger was insatiable, their need for blood driving them to commit unspeakable horrors. The village elders convened in secret, determined to find a way to end the plague that had befallen them. They turned to the old, forgotten texts that spoke of rituals and protections against the undead. They sought the help of an old, eccentric woman named Baba Yaga, who lived at the edge of the forest, rumored to possess knowledge of the supernatural. Baba Yaga listened to their plight with a grave expression, her weathered hands tracing symbols in the air as she muttered incantations under her breath. She told them of the ritual they must perform, one that required the bones of the undead to be dug up and burned, and their ashes scattered at a crossroads. It was a dangerous task, one that would require courage and strength, but it was the only way to rid the village of the vampire's curse. As the villagers prepared for the daunting task, Blagojevici and Pale continued their reign of terror. Each night, the village grew quieter, the streets empty, as fear kept the people indoors. Yet, even behind locked doors and shuttered windows, they were not safe. Blagojevici's and Pal's cunning and malevolence knew no bounds, and they found ways to prey upon the weakest and most vulnerable. One night, a small child named Myla vanished from her bed. Her mother awoke to find the window open and Myla gone, a small trickle of blood marking the windowsill. The village was thrown into chaos, the disappearance of the child a stark reminder of the vampire's power. The villagers' resolve hardened, their fear turning into determination. They would not let the undead claim another victim. Under the cover of darkness, the bravest of the villagers, armed with stakes and torches, made their way to the cemetery. The air was thick with an unnatural chill and the silence was oppressive. As they began to dig up Blagojevich's and Powell's graves, the ground seemed to resist them, as though the earth itself was trying to protect its undead occupants. Sweat and fear mingled as the villagers worked, each shovel full of dirt bringing them closer to the horrors below. When they finally unearthed the coffins, a palpable wave of dread washed over them. With trembling hands, they pried open the lids, 
revealing the grotesque forms of Blagojevici and Pale. Their bodies were unnaturally preserved, eyes open and staring, mouths twisted into cruel, hungry smiles. The villagers steeled themselves, driving stakes into the hearts of the abominations, their cries echoing in the night. The ritual was completed in silence. The ashes of Blagojevici and Pale scattered at the crossroads as instructed. For a moment, it seemed as though the nightmare was over, the air feeling lighter, the oppressive fear lifting. But as the villagers returned to their homes, a sense of unease lingered. The next night, the village remained deathly still. The villagers clung to the hope that they had succeeded, that the terror was finally over. But deep in the forest, in the darkest shadows, something stirred. Blagojevici and Pale, vile and relentless, were not so easily vanquished. In the heart of the night, a soft, insistent tapping began at the window of another home. And the nightmare was far from over. The soft tapping at the window of the old farmhouse was barely audible, yet it cut through the still night like a knife. Inside, Petra, a widow living on the outskirts of Yevanovic, woke with a start. She sat up in bed, her heart pounding. The stories of Blagojevici and Pale were fresh in her mind, and fear clenched her heart in a cold grip. Petra, came the whispered voice from the window. Petra, let me in. It was the voice of her late husband, Luca, who had died a year ago in a mysterious accident. Petra's heart ached with grief, but the fear overpowered her longing. She knew the stories she knew what the voice truly meant. Gathering her courage, she crept to the window and peered through the crack in the shutter. There, illuminated by the pale moonlight, stood Luca, just as she remembered him but with an unnatural pallor and glowing eyes that sent a shiver down her spine. Petra, he whispered again, his voice more insistent. I am so hungry. Let me in. She slammed the shutter closed, her hands shaking, and backed away from the window. She knew she could not succumb to the monster's deception, no matter how much it resembled her beloved Luca. The tapping ceased, and the night grew silent once more, but Petra did not sleep. Instead, she sat in her bed, clutching a silver cross, praying for dawn to come swiftly. Meanwhile, in the heart of Yevanovic, the villagers convened once again, this time with a renewed sense of urgency. The disappearance of Mila and the resurgence of Blagojevici and Paul's terror left them desperate for answers. Baba Yaga was summoned once more, her ancient knowledge the village's last hope. Baba Yaga arrived, her presence commanding attention despite her frail appearance, her eyes, sharp and knowing, scanned the anxious faces of the villagers. The ritual failed, she said solemnly. The ashes at the crossroads were disturbed. The evil still walks among us. But how? A villager named Dragon asked, his voice trembling. We did everything you said. Baba Yaga nodded, her expression grave. There is more to this than we understood. The bonds that tie these creatures to our world are stronger, more insidious. We need to uncover their origin, the true source of their power. The villagers exchanged worried glances. The idea of delving deeper into the dark history of their village was terrifying, but they had no choice. Baba Yaga instructed them to search the old, abandoned church at the edge of the village, a place long rumored to be cursed. It was said that before Yevanovic was a peaceful village, dark rituals had been performed there, invoking powers best left undisturbed. As dawn broke, a group of the bravest villagers, including Dragan, Petra, and a young woman named Anya set out for the church. The building loomed in the distance, a silhouette of decay and dread. Vines choked its stone walls, and the air around it seemed heavier, thick with the scent of decay. Inside the church, the air was cool and damp. The faint light filtering through the stained glass windows cast eerie shadows on the floor. They moved cautiously, their footsteps echoing in the vast emptiness. At the altar, they found an old, leather-bound book, its pages brittle with age. Baba Yaga, who had accompanied them, opened it and began to read. The book told the story of an ancient pact, made centuries ago by a desperate priest who sought to protect his flock from a plague. In his desperation, he had turned to dark magic, summoning entities from the depths of the underworld. The pact granted the village protection, but at a terrible cost. The priest had to sacrifice his soul and the souls of his descendants, binding them to the entities forever. This is it. Baba Yaga said, her voice barely above a whisper. This is the source of their power. The pact is the reason Blagojevici and Pale cannot be destroyed so easily. 
Their souls are bound by this ancient curse. But how do we break it? Anya asked, her eyes wide with fear and determination. Baba Yaga looked up, her expression one of grim resolve. We must find the priest's descendants and break the bloodline. Only then can we sever the ties that bind these creatures to our world. The villagers were stunned. The task before them was daunting, and the thought of having to hunt down and confront the descendants of the priest was terrifying. Yet, they knew it was the only way to save their village. As they prepared to leave the church, a chilling wind swept through the building, extinguishing their torches. In the darkness, they heard a low, menacing growl. Blagojevici and Paol were near, drawn to the villagers' discovery. Quickly, Baba Yaga urged, lighting a new torch. We must return to the village and prepare. They know we are onto them. The group hurried back to Yovanovic, their fear mounting with every step. They knew that the vampires would not wait passively while their power was threatened. That night, as the villagers fortified their homes and gathered weapons, they felt the weight of impending doom. Petra, in her small farmhouse, felt a familiar dread as night fell. She could sense Blagojevici and Powell's presence, lurking just beyond the edge of the forest. As she sat by the window, clutching the silver cross, she prayed for the strength to protect herself and her village. In the darkness, Blagojevici and Pale watched, their eyes gleaming with a malevolent hunger. They knew the villagers were close to uncovering the secret of their power, and they would stop at nothing to prevent their downfall. The night was their ally, and they moved through it with a silent, deadly grace. As midnight approached, the village held its breath. The wind howled through the trees, carrying with it the whispers of the damned. Blagojevici and Pale advanced, their presence a tangible force of evil. They would strike hard and fast, hoping to crush the villager's spirit before the dawn. In the midst of this tension, a sudden cry rang out. Petra, standing guard by her window, saw a shadow moving swiftly through the trees. She knew it was time. Gathering her courage, she stepped outside, ready to face the nightmare that had haunted her and her village for far too long. The confrontation was inevitable, the stakes higher than ever. As the villagers armed themselves and prepared for the battle to come, they knew that the future of Yovanovic hung in the balance. They were fighting not just for their lives, but for the very soul of their village. And so, in the cold, unforgiving night, the villagers of Yovanovic stood together, their hearts filled with a mix of fear and determination. The battle against Blagojevici and Pale was about to begin, and only time would tell who would emerge victorious. The shadows deepened, and the night grew darker. The final confrontation loomed an epic clash between the living and the undead, between hope and despair. And as the first light of dawn began to creep over the horizon, the villagers braced themselves for the fight of their lives, knowing that the fate of Yovanovic rested on their shoulders. The first light of dawn began to break, casting a faint glow over the village of Yovanovic. The villagers, armed and ready, stood at the edge of the forest, their breaths visible in the cold air. Petra, Dragon, Anya, and Baba Yaga were at the forefront, their eyes scanning the darkness for any sign of movement. Stay together, Baba Yaga whispered, her voice firm. We must be strong. The creatures of the night will not easily relinquish their hold. A hush fell over the group as they waited, the silence broken only by the rustling of leaves in the wind. Suddenly, a blood-curdling scream pierced the air. It came from the direction of Petra's farmhouse. The villagers turned as one, their hearts pounding with dread. They've attacked, Dragon shouted, to the farmhouse, quickly. The group sprinted through the village, their torches lighting the way. When they reached Petra's home, the sight that greeted them was one of horror. The door was ajar, and inside, the furniture was overturned, blood smeared across the walls. Petra, Anya called out, her voice shaking. Where are you? From the shadows, a figure emerged, dragging a limp body. It was Blagojevici, his eyes glowing with a terrifying hunger. He held Petra by the throat, her lifeless eyes staring blankly ahead. Beside him, Pale appeared, blood dripping from his fangs. Welcome, Blagojevici hissed, his voice dripping with malice. We've been expecting you. The villagers recoiled in horror, their resolve wavering. Baba Yaga stepped forward, her eyes blazing with defiance. She raised her hands, chanting an ancient incantation. The air around her shimmered with power but Blagojevici and Pale merely laughed. Your magic is useless, old woman, Pale sneered. The pact is stronger than you can imagine. With a swift movement, Pale lunged at Baba Yaga, his fangs bared. She tried to defend herself, 
but he was too fast. He sank his teeth into her neck, and she fell to the ground, her lifeblood spilling onto the floor. No, Dragon shouted, rushing forward with his stake. But Blagojevichu was ready. He moved with inhuman speed, grabbing Dragon and hurling him across the room. Dragon's head struck the wall with a sickening thud, and he crumpled to the floor, unconscious. Anya, tears streaming down her face, raised her own stake. You won't take us all, she cried, charging at Blagojevichu. But he caught her easily his strength far surpassing hers. He twisted her arm, forcing her to drop the stake, and leaned in close, his breath cold against her skin. You are brave, little one, he whispered, but bravery will not save you. With a swift bite, he drained her of life, her body falling limp in his arms. He dropped her to the ground, turning his attention back to the remaining villagers, who stood frozen in fear and despair. The dawn's light began to creep further into the room, but it was weak and feeble, unable to banish the darkness that now claimed Yuvanovic. The villagers' hope was shattered, their resistance crushed. Blagojevich and Pale stepped outside, standing in the pale morning light. It seemed that even the sun could not fully dispel their presence. They looked over the village, their domain now completely under their control. Let this be a lesson, Blagojevich announced, his voice carrying over the silent houses. We are eternal. You cannot escape us. Pale nodded, a sinister smile playing on his lips. The pact will endure. The blood of Yuvanovic will sustain us forever. The remaining villagers, their spirit broken, fell to their knees, weeping. There was no victory, no salvation. The curse of the undead had claimed them all, and the shadow of Blagojevichi and Pale would haunt Yuvanovic for eternity. In the heart of the forest, the ancient curse tightened its grip the dark magic that bound Blagojevichi and Pale growing ever stronger. The village of Yevanovic was lost, a place of eternal night, where the screams of the living echoed through the halls of the dead. And so, the tale of Yevanovic ended not with a triumphant dawn, but with an everlasting darkness. The villagers' dreams were shattered, their lives claimed by the very monsters they had sought to destroy. Blagojevichi and Pale reigned supreme, their hunger never sated, their power unchallenged. The village would remain a place of dread, where the shadows never lifted, and the whispers of the damned carried on the wind. And for those who dared to remember, the story of Yevanovic served as a grim reminder that some evils can never be vanquished, some curses never broken, 